Welcome to Gospel in Life. Thank you for joining as we go through this special series of meditations by Tim Keller, Trusting God in Difficult Times. This new series is meant to encourage you to trust God more deeply and to meditate on His Word and what it promises to give you strength and hope in difficult times. And now here's today's meditation. My title for this reflection is Talking to Yourself, Not Listening to Yourself. Psalm 42, verses 3 to 6. My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the Mighty One, with shouts of joy and praise amongst the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why are you so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God. For I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. My soul is downcast within me, therefore I will remember you. Now, it's interesting that the condition of this psalmist is downcast, as he said. My soul is downcast. It's a word for despondency or despair. And a lot of us are experiencing that, especially during this uh, time of the pandemic. Now, what do we do about that? And there's three things the psalmist says that we should do. The first thing is you pour out your soul. Uh, The very first verses talk about, I pour out my soul uh, to the Lord. And uh, that's a a godly, ancient version of what today we call getting in touch with your feelings. That is to say, uh, you you don't take your feelings and say, oh, no, no, if I trust God, I I don't have these despondent uh, thoughts. I'm not a real upset. No, he is getting in touch. He is pouring out his soul. He is actually listening to the the emotions and the feelings of his heart. So the first thing is, he does get in touch with his feelings and he pours out his soul. But the second thing is a self-dialogue. Now, he speaks to himself. Have you noticed when he says, why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? That's the old King James version of it, which I remember from my youth. Uh, He's not praying to God, but he's also not speaking to readers. He's talking to himself. It's a self-dialogue. And this is the very essence of understanding how you yourself can handle anything. Dr. David Martin Lloyd-Jones many years ago uh, wrote a sermon on this, uh, or preached a sermon, then wrote it down on this text, and it had a big impact on me. I couldn't say it better than him. Let me just explain by reading uh, what he says in that sermon. He says, the first thing we have to learn is what the psalmist learned. We must learn to take ourselves in hand. He is talking to himself. He is addressing himself. It is important to see that this is not the same as morbidity and introspection. We must talk to ourselves instead of allowing ourselves to talk to us. In spiritual depression, we allow ourselves to talk to us instead of talking to ourselves. Am I being deliberately paradoxical? Far from it. This is the very essence of wisdom in this matter. Have you realized that so much of your unhappiness in your life is due to the fact you're listening to yourself instead of talking? So this man stands up and says, self, listen for a moment. Then you must go on to remind yourself of who God is and what God is and what God has done and what God has pledged himself to do. And then on this great note, defy yourself and defy other people and defy the devil and the whole world and say with the man, I shall yet praise him for he is my God. You see, what Lloyd-Jones is saying is, that when you listen to your heart, it means your heart's, your heart's saying all kinds of panicky things. Oh my goodness, it's never going to get better. Oh my word. Oh no, listen, this might happen. That might happen. You turn and you say, let me talk to you about some things, heart. This is what I know about God. This is what he's planned. This is what he's promised. You're listening to your heart? No, you're talking to your heart. So first of all, there's pouring out your soul. Secondly, there's self-dialogue. And thirdly, reorder your hopes. See, the psalmist says, hope in God. I shall praise him. He's redirecting what he puts his hope in. And of course, we have, as Christians, we have another, by the way, Psalm, Psalm 103, where it says, forget not all his benefits. Why are you cast down on my soul? Forget not all his benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And don't forget what he's given us. And as Christians, we know this. When I think about my justification, then I won't dwell on the past and guilt. When I think about my sanctification, then I realize I can change and I won't feel like, oh, I'll never change. When I think of my adoption, 
then I'll remember, oh my, my God, God does hear me and he does love me the way a father loves a child. When I think of my future resurrection, I'm not afraid of aging or dying. When I think about uh, how much he loves me in Jesus Christ, then I have a confidence. Reorder your hopes, talk to yourself, pour out your soul, and you will praise him, your Savior and your God. And now here's Tim and Kathy Keller for a short time of Q&A on today's meditation. Um, I found what you were saying interesting because uh, modern counseling theory is increasingly leaning towards recommending self-talk therapy uh, to counter the negative uh, self-talk that you get all right. the time that you are supposed to be doing positive self-talk. Right. Uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, isn't that what they call it? Mm -hmm. But this is far more ancient and far more nuanced because it's not just a matter of I think badly of myself, so I'm going to tell myself I'm great. I mean, I'm going to pump up my self-esteem, etc. This is actually refocusing you in a totally different direction. Yeah, I, uh, when we were younger, I don't know what it's called now, but when we were younger, it was called rational emotive therapy and it was also yeah. called cognitive therapy. Right. <laughs> and the idea, which is sound, is that your feelings are not the result of what happens to you, but they're the result of what you tell yourself about what's happened to you. And therefore, if something happens to you and you say, uh, oh, that's hopeless, I mean, that, that shows that I'm a failure, then it, then you can say that the, the circumstance made you depressed and actually it's what you're saying to yourself that's made you depressed. And that's the idea behind rational motor therapy and cognitive therapy. I would say only this, that even though uh, we can do that too, uh, but when you're talking about God and the universe, that's not just stoicism. Stoicism basically says stuff your feelings. You have bad feelings, we're just gonna stuff them. Uh, we're gonna, uh, the, when you're talking about God and the universe, you are actually inviting yourself into having a, an actual encounter with God uh, through prayer. So you're not only, uh, in some ways in prayer, you are, yes, thinking the right thoughts. You're saying God has done this and God has done that, but you're speaking in the presence of God who can actually come in and, and, and say yes to your heart. Uh, Romans 8, 16 says, the spirit bears witness with our spirit that we're children of God. And the idea there is you can say, I'm a child of God, but sometimes the spirit comes in and comes alongside and says, yes, you are. Just the way the spirit came down when Jesus was baptized and it said, this is my beloved child whom I'm well pleased. So uh, cognitive therapy in a, in a sense, is a form of stoicism in which you're just talking to yourself and trying to uh, make yourself believe a certain truth. But Christianity gives you not just your mind and the truth, but the Holy Spirit to actually make that real to your heart. And therefore, that really does change you from the inside out. If you found today's meditation encouraging, please subscribe below and be sure to share it with a friend to encourage them as well. And if you'd like to hear more teachings by Tim Keller, you can listen to new sermons every week at gospelandlife.com slash podcast. Thanks again for watching Gospel and Life.